Before we take a look inside this new Caravalair Antares 476, there are a couple of numbers you need to know. First of all, it costs a little over £14,000. And secondly, it weighs just 1,200 kilos, and that includes a really generous 243 kilo payload. Actually, there's a third number that you need to think about, and that's the number six, because this is actually a six berth van, and four of those berths are fixed beds, making it ideal for a family that are just getting started out in caravanning. Bearing in mind that price tag, you'd expect it to be pretty no frills, but in fact, there's a generous kit level. There's an AKS hitch stabiliser, plus shock absorbers and alloy wheels. Not something you'd usually expect on such a budget caravan. Although much of the rest of the van will feel unfamiliar, from those unusual looks to details such as the waste outlet in the middle at the rear, the larger steady winder bolts and the filler for the electric flush loo being inside the cassette hatch. But there are also several details that you don't normally find on a van at this price point, such as an access hatch to get under the large fixed bed, which is joined by a generous front gas locker, and here at the back on the offside, a really brilliant motorhome style garage. It's fantastic. You can lift up the bed and there's space to put in your bikes. It's a really great detail to see on a caravan and a very continental feature. Now, hopefully by now, that unconventional exterior will have given you an idea that the interior isn't exactly following the norm of a British caravan. And that's certainly the case from the moment you walk through the door, which is, of course, on the off side, not the UK near side. The first thing to greet you is this enormous fixed bed, not at the back, as you might expect, but right in the front. As ever, it's got a huge amount of storage underneath. But what's really unusual about it is it's simply massive, well over six feet long and a decent width. It's great to see and it's also really very comfortable. There's plenty of extra kit up here too. We've got a TV mount and the appropriate sockets at the foot of the bed. We've got reading lights and these rather neat little pockets for magazines or books. Admittedly, not particularly good for a cup of tea. There's another socket in the corner there and another unusual detail, which is the fact that the washroom is alongside us in the front near side corner of the caravan. It's really only a small wet room, but it has all you could need with a bench loo and a rather flimsy fold down sink above, plus a proper shower with a curtain to prevent soaking your loo roll. The floor is the shower tray, there's an LED strip light above, a smoked window on the offside, and a narrow shelf. The real heart of this caravan is this combined kitchen, lounging, dining area in the centre of the van. And although it does feel a little bit spartan with this white finish throughout, it is surprisingly well equipped. There's an in-unit sink and three burner gas hob, a bit like the kind of thing that you would find in a camper van, although it's larger than that and there are three rings on there. And when you close the lids, it gives you a bit of additional food preparation space because it has to be said, it's pretty limited without. I do like the little wire rack in the corner there, which is an ideal place to put your washing up liquid and brush. Underneath the counter, we've got an 85 litre fridge and a rather neat little drawer with space for your cutlery. Talking of storage, there's a couple of overhead cupboards and then the wardrobe just in front of the kitchen above the Truma heater. Although our wardrobe doesn't have a rail fitted, maybe that's something that you do after you've bought the van. There's also a full height cupboard here, which is shelved from top to bottom, very useful. Now this is a continental caravan, so you don't expect a particularly high spec kitchen. However, this one has been aimed towards the UK market, so it does have a combined oven and grill fitted. Now you remember I referred to this as a kitchen lounging dining area. Well, the lounging really does take a little bit of a back seat. That said, the dining is very well served. This dinette seats four in comfort, six at a very tight squeeze. If there's more than four adults, I think you'd have to do your dinner in shifts with a very large dining table too. As for the lounging, well, to get any kind of relaxation here, I think you're gonna have to take the table away and store it under the front fixed bed. Now talking of beds, across the back of the van is one of the real highlights of this layout. These two fantastic fixed bunks. They're really roomy and the kids don't take a back seat as they do in many so-called family vans. They're also big enough that they'll be able to serve your children well into their teenage years. If you've got any guests or indeed more than two kids, well, this dinette also converts into a double bed, 
but it is quite a narrow double, maybe more of a very generous single. Caraval Air is being brought back to the UK by dealer giant Marquis, which is hoping to emulate the success of its reintroduction of the Benimar brand to the motorhome market a couple of seasons ago. Whether the more traditionalist caravan buyer takes to this French newcomer with its unconventional layouts remains to be seen, but one thing's for sure, you'll struggle to find a better value package on the market today.